Hello, Bayshore Christian community. I want to start by reading the first few verses of Psalm 103. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Who forgives all your iniquities, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from destruction, who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfies your mouth with good things, so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. Well, praise God. It was so nice to see all of you on Saturday, many of you on Saturday as we did our book pickup. Thank you for responding so quickly. Your faces were encouraging, your words were encouraging, and being in this Christian community at Bayshore has been very encouraging as we've loved each other and supported each other and stepped up for the good of this next generation and helped them through this time of distance learning. Take a, take a listen to the podcast in this newsletter. It's Basecamp Live. Many of you will recognize the voice of the host. His name is Davies Owens. He flew in from Idaho last month to be our guest speaker at the Bayshore Benefit over at the Grand Hotel. And he interviews a psychologist and gives a lot of really, really great and practical information that will be helpful to many of you in this time of, of uh, self-quarantine and teacher-directed home learning. For those of you who are looking to cultivate virtue during this time, I encourage you to cultivate the virtue of contentment. Aristotle said that contentment, I'm sorry, virtues rather, lie at the midpoint between two vices. So contentment is the virtue that lies between the vice of slothfulness or laziness and the vice of anxiety or uh, irritability. So too much contentment goes on one side, too little contentment on the other. Seek to cultivate the virtue of contentment at this time. Of course, we don't find our ultimate authority from the ancients like Aristotle, but rather the ancient of days, our creator, God. For those of you celebrating Easter in unique ways this weekend, remember that we don't have school tomorrow. It's Good Friday. If you want to sleep out under the stars, and contemplate the darkness of the death of Christ or the darkness of the tomb, uh, that might be a unique way to celebrate Easter with your family. You can also get up on Sunday morning and go for a sunrise walk, sunrise celebration walk with your family. Read passages from Matthew 28 or other places where you read about the discovery of the empty tomb and the, the celebration at that time. Another way you might want to uh, work with your family are prepare 12 eggs with items in each egg from the Passion Week and Bible verses. So the first one might be a palm branch and a scripture verse from, that's folded up in there about Christ riding in on the donkey. The other, other ones might uh, include so a palm branch, coins, a whip, purple cloth, thorns, nails, dice, spear, cross, uh, grave clothing, gauze, uh, a stone, and of course number 12 is empty with the scripture verse talking about the empty tomb. There's many different ways and, uh, and good things that you can be doing right now. I'm giving you ideas, your pastors, your ministry leaders, uh, your Facebook friends are giving you ideas. I'd encourage you to not do any of them. You just rest. Be still and know that, I'm, that I am God, we're instructed. So don't be overwhelmed. Instead, rest, be present with your family, be present with God, and don't worry about uh, getting perfect scores on schoolwork. We're seeking to continue to be uh, gracious and understanding that we're all doing our best. We're moving forward, and we're going to have very few, if any, educational gaps during this time. So continue to rest and trust that God is in control. Know that we're going to be gracious during this time with uh, schoolwork, and we know you're all working hard and doing your best. So until next week, I pray that you'll have a wonderful celebration of Easter, and we'll talk to you next week. God bless.